although the first tetrapods, the first amphibians of the late Devonian, were the ancestors of all later forms, and thus their skull bones represent the ancestral tetrapod pattern. The early salamanders evolved over 150 million years later, and their lineage has been separated from that of mammals for hundreds of millions of years. And so therefore, changes have occurred since the ancestral form. So much so that living salamanders lack many of the skull bones present in the first amphibians. And many salamanders have skulls which are substantially different from other salamanders, having evolved these differences since the various suborders and families uh, have diverged. These images here are of the salamander genus Nectoris in the family Proteidae. Note that, as expected, the dorsal portion of the cranium is composed of prominent frontal and parietal bones. As is typical in the ancestral state, the cranium is flat. While some salamanders possess a maxillary bone here in red, the genus Nectoris lacks it. And so therefore, while the premaxillary bone of the upper jaw holds teeth, there is no maxillary bone, which in most species holds the majority of the marginal teeth. Although there are teeth located on the pterygoid, which in humans is part of the sphenoid bone, and the vomer. Remember that in ancestral fish, there can be teeth and quite prominent fangs on bones of the roof of the mouth. And so therefore this genus of salamander possesses teeth on multiple skull bones uh, in the roof of the mouth. In humans and in other mammals, the complex temporal bone is composed of the fusion of separate elements, including the squamosal bone, which forms the jaw joint, the petrosal bone, which surrounds the middle and inner ear, and the quadrate, which composes one of the small middle ear bones. In salamanders, such as Nectoris, these are three separate bones of the skull that do not form a composite temporal bone. The vertebrate skull is composed of three regions. In addition to the dermal bone of the dermatocranium, there are two regions of cartilage, which may, in typical groups like uh, humans, be converted to bone. Uh, these are the gill arch skeleton of the splanchnocranium. And given that adult nectoris salamanders retain their larval gills, they then retain some of the cartilaginous supports for these gills as seen here. The third region of the skull is the cartilaginous condocranium, which in uh, these salamanders remains cartilaginous, although in humans, this cartilage is converted to regions of the ethmoid, sphenoid, temporal, and occipital bones. 